There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. I'm sure, but I, I don't know where. Perhaps I can help you find it. Oh, th thank you. Thank you. I don't even know how I came to be out here. It's certainly not safe at this time of night. Oh, at any time. Oh, surely the daytime when the streets are crowded. No, that's what is most dangerous. For me. So you see, I never go out. Never? Never. But, dear lady, why not? Afraid. Afraid? Of something or someone? Some... one. It, it's difficult to explain. Please, try me. Oh, I'm not sure you'd believe me. You think I'm just a senile old woman. I'd believe you, Wanda. <gasps> what? What did you call me? Wanda. That is your name, isn't it? Yes, but... But I didn't tell you that. Uh, you didn't? Are you certain? Yes, I'm certain. How do you know my name? <laughs> because I've been looking for you for a long time, Wanda. Oh, no. You've kept me at bay for many years, but no longer. No! Get away from me! There's nowhere to turn, Wanda. You don't know where you are, remember? You certainly couldn't run from me, a frail old woman like you. Please! <laughs> no, I won't let you! Say that again. It amuses me. You won't let me. How do you imagine you're going to stop me? You really have no choice, Wanda. There's nowhere for you to go now. Come to me, old woman. Take my hand. No! Take my hand. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Would I be? But, but, but is it, is it night or, or day? Oh, that's right. The clock is broken. It's, it's been broken a long time. And I can't get it repaired, can I? Not without going. No. No, I can't. I mustn't. I have to resist every temptation. Oh, really, Wanda? How could you be so careless? How could you fall asleep before... Uh, uh, I must check. Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah, yes. The, the boards and the windows are still secure. Is, is that... Can I feel a breeze? Is there a gap? Oh, not enough. Not, not enough. He still can't get in. Oh, what about the door? Ah, ah, chains on. Ah, 
And the door is locked. Good. Good. He can't come in that way either. Oh, yes, I'm safe. Safe for another day. But, but I've been careless. Careless. Really, falling asleep before checking. I, I mustn't take chances. I can't take chances. Not while he's out there. And he's always out. Miss Dunn? Miss Dunn, are you all right in there? Who are you? It's Barry. Mr. Fabian, you know, uh, from the grocery store. Uh, I know we've actually never met, but, well, we've spoken on the phone, Miss Dunn. At least we used to. <laughs> do you even have a phone anymore? Anyway, you know me, right? What do you want? I'm delivering your groceries, Miss Dunn. You remember? Charlie, the kid who works for me, was supposed to bring them, I know, but he called in sick. Yeah, kids these days, huh? No sense of responsibility. Anyway, I, uh, I thought I'd better get them to you now instead of waiting till tomorrow. I figured, you know, you'd be waiting for them. Is, is that all right? Put the food through the letterbox. The letterbox, right. Okay. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Fabian. Y your money is coming under the door now. Under the door? Here it is. Miss Dunn, wouldn't uh, it be easier to just... Six dollars and... Okay. Thir Thirty-two cents. Uh, many thanks, Miss Dunn, but, uh... Good day to you, Mr. Papian. Miss Dunn, are you still there? Yes. What is it? Well, I, I, I've been thinking. I, I mean, I, I just wonder. Miss Dunn, does anybody else bring you food? I really don't see what business of yours that is, Miss Papian. Well, well, no, it's, it's nothing like that, I promise you. I mean, this isn't anything to do with business. I'm just concerned for your well-being. I mean, it seems to me a person can't live on food big enough to fit through a letterbox. I can assure you, Mr. Fabian, I'm in no danger of dying as long as I observe this strict regimen. Oh, well, uh, I'm glad to hear you talk like that, but I don't know. I, maybe if I could come in for a minute. Come in? Yeah, I just want to talk, Miss Dunn. I mean, I can't do that so well out here. I really think you need to see a doctor. Out of the question. No one is coming in here, Miss Fabian. Not a doctor, and not you. Miss Dunn. Miss Dunn, could you open the door, please? Go away! Miss Dunn, I just want to help you. I know what you want. Leave me alone. Miss Dunn. Miss Dunn, all I... I know who you are. You do? Well, that's good. That, that, that's very good. Myself, I... I have a very bad memory. Every morning, you know, my wife gives me a pen. Every day I lose it somewhere. So, will you let me in? Stop trying to get in here. You won't get me. Just go away and leave me alone. Come on, Miss Dunn. Look, I've got other deliveries to make. I, I just I just want to help you if I can. I, I, I think you could use a little help. Ah, the heck with it. Good luck living here in this neighborhood. What's left of it? Go away. I won't let you in. I won't let you get me. Leave me alone. I don't want to die. I don't want to to die. Please! Freeze! Shot. I need help. Please, please do something to help. Who are you? Uh, officer, 
I, I'm a police officer. Please, you have to open the door. I need help. I've been shot. You're lying to me. I know you. You can't fool me. No, 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 no. I'm not. I, I'm not trying to fool you. Please, please. I, th I, I think I'm dying. You can't trick me so easily. You're no policeman. Why can't you just leave me alone? I know who you are. I know what you are. An old woman living in a waking nightmare. An old woman who has fought a thousand battles with death and has always won. Now she's faced with a grim decision. A decision that might to others seem the simplest in the world. That of whether or not to open a door. And in some strange and frightening way, she knows that this seemingly ordinary door leads to the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Nothing in the Dark. Starring Marshall Allman, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Please, why won't you help me? Stop this! Why must you do this to me? I'm losing a lot of blood. It's so cold out here. Listen to me. I... Uh, uh, I'm going to open the door. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But I'm leaving the chain on. Don't even try to touch me. I won't let you. Don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. I couldn't hurt anybody. Oh. You're so young. Almost a child. Unless, unless you help me, I'm gonna die. I don't think I can even move very far. Oh, don't say that. Oh, it isn't fair. No, oh, it just isn't fair. You keep trying to trick me. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't move! Don't do that again. Or... Or I'll close the door. What? Listen, lady. I've been shot. I'm bleeding to death. Do you understand? Do you understand? Please. My name is Harold Belden. I need a doctor. I need a doctor right away. Please, call the hospital. I can't get there myself. I haven't got a telephone. Not anymore. Then let me come inside. You can't just leave me. I'm begging you. I'm freezing. Uh, I have to unlock the door. You can't ask me to do that. You can't. I don't want to die. You understand? So you're not going to help me? You're just going to let me die out here? I know who you are. No, I told you who I am. My name is Belden. Officer Harold Belden. <laughs> That's not her name. There is no such person. Stop trying to trick me. I don't understand why you keep saying that. <sighs> Look, it hurts. It hurts, okay? Please, lady, please. Stop! Stop! <laughs> why are you torturing me like this? I tell you, it isn't. I don't want to die. Well, I don't want to die either. If I could get help for myself, I would, but I can't move. I've been shot in the side, you see? Look, look, I'm bleeding. Oh, it isn't fair. It isn't fair. Will you help me? Yes. Yes, I'll help you. Thank you. Take my hand. What? Take my hand. Pull me inside. No, I won't. I mean, I, I can't. Oh, can't you? Can't you crawl in? Oh, I don't think so. Please, try. <gasps> Quickly. I don't want to leave the door open. <sighs> That's it. Come over 
<laughs> Into the bed. No milk, I'm afraid. Uh, <coughs> no, no do, don't get up, officer. Conserve your strength. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Please, call me Harold. You, you saved my life. I owe you at least that much. I, is it good? Um, it's fine. Thank you. How long have I been out? Hours. What time is it? I'm not sure. Morning, I think. What do you think? I... I don't have a clock. Well, I, I guess it is morning. It's hard to tell. What happened to your windows? Who boarded them up? Well, I did. A long time ago now. But they're still as strong as ever. What? Why would you do that? Oh, I have my reasons. Well, we all have our own reasons for doing things. Why would you want to be a policeman? To be in a job where people try to kill you. Well, why would you want to court death like that? Court death? I, I don't know that I'd put it that strongly. I do what I do because there's just some jobs that have to be done. You mean it's a sort of vocation? <laughs> I, I guess you could say that. Listen, uh, Mrs. Um, uh, it's Miss Dunn. Listen, Miss Dunn, you should try to get some rest yourself. <laughs> you need it more than I do. No, really, I, I feel much better. When the doctor gets here, he'll he'll take me off your hands for good. The doctor? Yeah, sure. He'll he'll check my wound, take me to the hospital. You, well, you didn't call the doctor? No, no, I didn't. Why not? Well, I uh, I told you last night. I haven't got a telephone. <laughs> don't you remember? No, I don't. I was I was kind of out of it last night. I guess. Of course. Perhaps you could use your radio to ask someone to come get you. Well, you could wait outside for them. No, I, no, I busted my radio when, it, when I fell on it. <clears throat> Let me see. And I don't think I got the shrink left to get up on my own. Look. Couldn't you go to one of the neighbors? Oh, there aren't any. What are you talking about? There aren't any neighbors. There must be. Everyone has neighbors. Well, I don't. Not anymore. Why? What happened? Well, they've all moved away. Not all of them. That's impossible. All of them! Trucks came and took away their furniture. First one, and then another. Is something happening to these buildings? I wouldn't know. I'm sorry to ask, but how, how can you not know something like that? I mean, if it was my home... I don't have a great deal of contact with the outside world. I haven't for quite some time. I couldn't even tell you who the president is. Wow. <laughs> but, I mean, but there has to be somebody around who can help. 
You know? Or maybe a phone booth somewhere where you could call a doctor. Perhaps. I don't know. But even, even if I could call the doctor somehow, I couldn't take a chance and let him in. Why not? It's too dangerous. Dangerous for you? Yes. You let me in. Oh, I didn't have a choice. You were going to... I didn't know if I could trust you, but... But <laughs> I'm, I'm still alive. Uh, of course you're still alive. What do you, what do you think I was going to do? I mean, but the, but the doctor, he's, he's not going to be any harm to you. I keep telling you I can't let the doctor in. I can't let anyone else come in. Don't you see? It might be him. It might be him? Who? Him who? Mr. Death. Uh, Mr. Death? <laughs> what? I know he's out there. He's trying to get in. He comes to the door and knocks. He begs me to let him in. Last week, he said he was from the gas company. The gas company? Oh, he's clever. After that, he claimed to be a contractor hired by the city. He said this building was condemned, that I'd have to leave. But I knew who he was. I kept the door locked, refused to let him in. Eventually, he went away. Uh, condemned, huh? I mean, that explains why there's no one else in the neighborhood. No. <laughs> he knows I'm on to him. Yesterday, he said he was Mr. Fabian from the store. But all he really wanted was to come in. <laughs> That's all he ever wants. Wait. Wait a second. Now it's no use. You wouldn't understand. I knew you wouldn't. How could you? I mean, oh wait, but I, I want to understand. I do, I mean, this man you're afraid of, you say, you say he's Mr. Death. That's right. You don't mean just anybody, do you? You mean, you mean like death, right? Death. That's right. So is this Mr. Death a person like you or me? I know it sounds crazy to someone like you, to anyone but me, but it's true. I know it's true. Okay, I understand what you're saying, but, I mean, people die all the time, all over the world. Now, how could one man be in all those places at once? I, I don't know. Don't ask me that. Maybe there's more than one of him. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't mean to upset you please please don't cry I, I, I'm not gonna hurt you I'm sorry okay can, can I have another cup of tea please uh, oh, uh, of course tell me about mr. death your tea thanks please mr. death I would like to know about him. All right. Uh, at first, I couldn't be sure. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Everything is... It's been so long since anything happened to me. But I was on a bus. There was an old woman sitting in front of me, knitting um, a scarf, I think. There was something about her face. I felt I knew her. Then a man got on the bus. He wasn't special in any way. Not short, not tall, not fat. Just, just a man. I remember that there were empty seats. But he sat down right next to the old woman. He didn't say anything to her. But I felt that his being there upset her in some way. I couldn't understand why. He seemed like such a nice man. When the old woman dropped her ball of yarn, he bent down and picked it up right in front of me. He 
brought it up to her. I saw their fingers touch. He stood up and got out the next stop. I couldn't move. It was as if I knew, knew what had happened. But I couldn't do anything. I was just so frightened. When the bus finally reached the end of the line, the driver came over to the woman. He thought she was asleep. But I knew, I knew she was... What, dead? Dead. And right then and there, I knew it was his touch that killed her. Okay, but you said it yourself. She was an old woman. Okay, just because this man touched her... Mr. Death. Just because he touched her hand, it doesn't mean he killed her. Maybe what you saw was just what it looked like. A man trying to be helpful. I mean, the real cause of her death might have been, you know, a, a heart failure or, or a stroke or something. I don't know. No, he killed her. <laughs> okay, I'm a cop. I've seen dead bodies. I've seen people that were killed by guns, knives, but never by a touch, okay? The man being there when she died, that's just a coincidence. But I've seen him since then, several times. I've seen him in crowds. I've watched for him. Every time someone I knew died, he was there. He, the same man, the one on the bus. No. He was a young soldier, then a, a salesman, a, a taxi driver. Someone you wouldn't notice uh, unless you were watching closely. But you could see him. Oh, yes. And I wondered why that should be. Why I could see him when no one else could. And then I knew... Why? It was because I was getting older. And my time was coming. I could see clearer than younger people, people like yourself. Now, do you understand? Oh, I know you don't believe me. That would be too much to ask of anyone. But do you at least understand? Please. I have to know. All right. Maybe. Maybe, okay? But if there is some Mr. Death who's able to visit all the people in the world like Santa Claus... Don't mock me. I, I'm, not, I'm not meaning to mock you, okay? I would never do that. I swear. But if he's real... He is. If he's real, then I don't see what the problem is. You don't see what the problem is? Oh, you must be joking. No, I mean, if you know what he looks like, what have you got to be afraid of? If you're right, and you can see death, I'd say you're kind of fortunate. Fortunate? Sure, yeah. I mean, you'd be able to see him coming. You could just avoid him. Oh, didn't I tell you his face is always different? He's different sizes, different ages, different races. I couldn't be sure. Well, how about when you go out? Out? Sure. Well, I know you said you don't have much contact with the outside world, but you have to go out sometime. I mean, to the shops or something, you know? Now, couldn't he touch you then, if he wanted to? No. Why not? I never go out. Never. Never. Oh, I haven't been out for years. I don't know how many. I don't keep count. That would be too depressing. But I suppose you can guess from the smell. You're too polite to mention it. But it must bother you as much as it bothers me. So, so what do you do about food? The boy at Mr. Fabian's store delivers it. But I never open the door to him. How, how can you live like this? Well, don't think I enjoy it. So why do you do it? 
Because if I don't live like this, I won't live at all. If I don't watch out, if I let down my guard even for a moment, he'll get him. I know he will. I haven't always lived like this, you know. I was young once. People said I was pretty. I lived out in the sunlight. I hated to be inside, even for a minute. My mother always said I'd spoil my fine complexion, but I didn't care. I loved outdoor things. I lived out in the sunlight, so warm, so beautiful. Beautiful, like, like I once was. You're still beautiful. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm old and cold. I miss the warmth of the sun so much. I... Oh, see that patch of sunlight on the floor? Where is it coming from? Um, I, I think it's coming in from between the cracks in the boards of the window over there. Oh, yes. Uh, it's so warm to the touch. You know, I've always hated the dark and the cold. And now I'm old. I've lived a long time, but I don't want to die. I've heard people say it was his time when an old person dies. But it's not your time if you're not ready to die. I'd rather live in the dark than not live at all. Miss, Miss Dunn, I promise you, there's nothing to be afraid of. We're all alone here. Hey, there's nobody outside the door. I know you're upset, okay? And you're clearly under a lot of pressure. But I think all you need is some rest. Uh, ah. Oh, officer. Yeah, I need help. Oh, I, I don't know what to do. Just give me some medical attention. Look, I don't, I don't know how badly I've been hurt, okay? But I've lost a lot of blood. And I need help soon. Or, or I don't know how much longer I can... I've told you I can't go out there. You can't ask me to do that. Look, this whole Mr. Death thing, I promise you, you don't have anything to worry about. Shh, shh, shh. Someone's coming. Well, get, the, get them to help me. Uh, no! There's nothing to be afraid of. Please, answer it. Go on. That's right. Go ahead. You're doing fine. Answer it. Go on. Uh, I, I, I'm keeping the chain on. That's fine. Do whatever you want. Just, just see who it is and get them to call for help. I'm sorry, lady, but I got my orders. No! Oh, get away! Officer Belden, help me! I can't fool around any longer. Step aside, I'm coming in. <laughs> Take my hand. Oh. Uh, uh. Uh -uh. Easy, lady. Just lie quiet there till you get your strength back. Oh. Uh, uh, what? You gave me quite a scare there when you fainted like that. Sorry I pushed you when I put my shoulder to the door. You started to faint and I offered you my hand, but you passed right out. For a second I thought that... Well, I don't even want to talk about that. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're okay. Ah, oh, and still I live. Huh? I, I told you I didn't mean to hurt you. It was an accident. You're not going to sue, are you? Well, what do you want with me? Here, let me help you get up. Take my... I can, can get up myself. <laughs> oh. Look, you gotta understand, man. I, I don't get no pleasure out of busting in doors. Who would? 
Except maybe some thug, but I'm no thug. I'm just a guy doing a job. Your job? Look, you don't seem to realize how important this is. I've got a crew and equipment coming in an hour to pull this tenement down. I'm begging your pardon, man, but looking at this place, I say it's long overdue. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised it's still standing. And you're really not Mr. Death? Mr. Who? I don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. My name's Armstrong. Bud Armstrong. I don't know about any Mr. whatever you said. All I know is I got a contract to demolish this row of buildings. That's what I got to do. Everybody else moved out a long time ago. Until the other day, I thought this whole building was deserted. I seen them windows boarded up, and I figured you moved out when the rest of them did. Thank goodness I met that guy from the grocery store, that uh, Mr. Fabian. Oh, Mr. Fabian. Then he was real, after all. Real? Well, what are you talking about? Uh, I told him about my job down here, then he told me all about you. That he was worried about you. Told me he had a kid bring you your stuff. That was the first I knew about you, and it's damn, I mean, excuse me, you're darn lucky I found out. Well, you'd still be in here when the wrecking ball hits. Now, come on, we gotta get out of here. You want me to go outside? Sure, didn't you just hear me? This place is coming down. You can't stay in here. You want me to leave here? You have to. I can't. It's Miss Dunn, right? Well, Miss Dunn, you were notified about the demolition job months ago. Look, I'm not out to bully you. I'm just trying to do my job here. These buildings were condemned by the city. Can't say I blame them. And I'm the one who's got to tear them down. Tear them down? Wow, can you? Look around you, ma'am. This building has had it. You can see that. I can see that. Anyone could see that. It's all worn out, dilapidated. All these buildings have got to come down. You seem like a nice person. A nice person shouldn't have to live in a place like this. Now let's the two of us just... Get away from me! Don't touch me! Please don't act like this. I ain't a monster lady. I've got a heart just like anybody else, and I can see how you could get attached to a place, but, you know, not want to see it wrecked. But when a building's this old, it's not fit to live in no more. It's dangerous. It's got to come down to make room for a new one, a stronger one. That's life, lady. Old make room for the new, you know? No. People get the idea that I'm some kind of destroyer. They think I get kicks out of tearing stuff down. But that ain't the way it is. No, that ain't the way it is at all. I just clear the ground so other people can build on it. In a way, I guess I kind of help them to it. Can't have one without the other, am I right? Look around you. It's just the way things are, you know? Like, uh, like when a big tree falls in the forest and a new one grows right out of the same ground. Old animals die and young ones take their places. It's just nature. That's how it is. Even people step aside when it's time. I won't. When I finally kick the bucket or when I get too old to contribute, my son-in-law will probably take over the... <gasps> the door! What about it? Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I didn't realize the chain was on when I put my shoulder to it. Door's okay, but the chain's high. You left the door open! Hey, there's no need Get to... Get out of my way! You don't have to do that. What's the sense of locking a door that won't even be here in an hour? I'm on the clock here, and we've waited long enough. If you've got any possessions you want to keep, Miss Dunn, I'd move them out while there's still time. I'll help you. You, you think you're helping me? I'm not going to leave here. Not with you. Not with anyone. Don't, don't try to touch me. I don't want anyone to hear me. Now look, ma'am, I've been nice to you. I've been trying to go easy. I know this must be tough for you. Any kind of move is a big upset. Especially to an older person like you. But if you insist on staying here, I'll have to call a cop. A, a cop? A police officer? It's just for your own good. 
Please cooperate, lady. <gasps> hey, where are you going? Of course, Mr. Belden. Explain it to him. Tell him the reason I can't go out there. I know you understand. I've told you everything. You, you'll help me, won't you? You'll help me stay. Well, say something. What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Who, Mr. Belden is a policeman. Mr. Belden? Who the heck is Mr. Belden? Is he your pet? You got a cat in here? Please, please tell him. Lady, I think maybe you're sick. You should come with me. I'll get you to a doctor. I don't need a doctor. Mr. Belden, won't you tell him? Okay, okay, I get it. I see how it is. Hey, I'm sorry, but if you're still here when the crew arrives, uh, I'll have to call a cop. I'm sorry, I wanted to make you understand, but... Okay. What's the matter with you? Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you help me? I thought you understood. I thought you'd help me. I think the question you should be asking yourself, Wanda, is how he looked straight at this bed and didn't see me. You called me Wanda, but I never told you my first name. Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. It, it, it's not true. It's not true. Yes, it is. The mirror, Wanda. Look in the mirror. What do you see? I can't. I won't. Look in the mirror, Wanda. What do you see? I... see nothing. Nothing but an empty bed. Turn around. Now what do you see? I... See you, Mr. Death. We'll be back to the Twilight Zone in just a moment. And now, Act Three of Nothing in the Dark, starring Marshall Allman. It was you. It was you all the time. Yes. It was me. Oh, don't get up. You're still... Oh. You're not hurt. No. No, I'm not. But you were shot. Those men... Did you see me get shot? No, but you were bleeding. Do you see any blood stains now? No. And the men? Did you see them? You were never hurt, were you? I can't be hurt. You tricked me. Yes, Wanda. I tricked you. It was all an illusion. One I created just for you. If it helps, I'm sorry. I would have preferred to avoid it if I could. But why? Why did you do it? The moment I let you inside, you could have taken me any time. Yes, I could have. But you were nice. You made me trust you. But I had to make you understand, Wanda. You see me now, and you've seen me before. Many times before. Starting with that day on the bus. Oh, I was right. It was you. The old lady's name was Iris. I knew then that you were upset. <laughs> upset? I thought it was important that you got to know me. What I said to you before, it was true. What, what you said? When you thought I was a policeman. You asked me why I did what I did. Uh, and you said there were some jobs that had to be done. That's right. That it was a kind of vocation. Actually, Wanda, 
You said that. But I suppose you're right in a way. Now ask yourself, am I really so bad? Am I really so frightening? You've talked to me. You've confided in me. Have I tried to hurt you? Well, no, but... Do you really believe I would ever hurt you? You don't look like someone who would want to hurt me. You see? It isn't me you're afraid of, is it? You know me now. You understand me. What you're afraid of, what you've really been afraid of all these years, is the unknown. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Don't. Don't be afraid. But I am afraid. You must be very tired, Wanda. I am. But the running's over now. It's time to rest. Uh, I'd like that, but... Give me your hand. I don't want to die. Trust me. No. No. Mother, give me your hand. I will. You see? See? See what? No shock. No engulfment. No loud thunder. What you feared would come like an explosion is like a whisper. What you thought was the end is the beginning. When will it happen? When will we go? Go? Yes. I... I'm ready now. Look over there, on the floor. What is that? Oh. oh. Now do you understand? It's me. It's you. My body. I look so calm. You see? We have already begun. Come with me. Yes. Please, I'd like to. It's such a beautiful day. It is. It surely is. You know, Mr. Armstrong was right about a lot of things. What things? Well, for one, his son does take over the business when he dies. Will that be soon? Another 16 years. Oh, dear. It'll be quick. I'm glad to hear that. I'm afraid I was a little harsh on him. Now the son-in-law, he lives to be 102. 102? Oh, goodness. I know. It's remarkable, really. Of course, the oldest person I ever met was a lady in Tibet. Well, how old was she? Take a guess. Oh, I know who to guess it. Come on, take a guess. You'll never believe it. There was an old woman who lived in a room and like all of us, was frightened of the dark. But who discovered in the minute last fragment of her life that there was nothing in the dark that wasn't there when the lights were on? Object lesson for the more frightened amongst us. In or out of the twilight zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. 
where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Nothing in the Dark, starring Marshall Allman with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by M.J. Elliott and written by George Clayton Johnson. Heard in the cast were Roz Alexander, Jeff Morrow, Doug James, and Mike Starr. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group and Westwood One. Custom Foley effects, sound design, and mixing are done in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by Cerny American creatives Matt Sorrow, Bob Benson, Todd Beyer, and Tim Cerny. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. It's done. It's Doug James speaking. 